so now I've gotten so much stronger and I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of things wrong with me. I need a shoulder replacement. They did shoulder surgery. It was a failed surgery when I went to a different surgeon who was better. And so I have very little range of motion on my right arm, but that's improving. Hi, Kathleen. Thanks for coming to spend some time with me today. Thank you for having the time for me today. <laughs> I don't oh, look very good because we've been working cutting trees in the yard all day. Good for you. You look fine. I would never have guessed that you've been cutting trees. All day. <laughs> well, I have to take Plavix because I have stints in my heart. So you can see all my bloody places from the branches. Uh, wow. So they, I had this since put in last July 15th, and I had to stay on the Plavix for a year. But actually, at four months, I didn't know because I read on the internet and I thought I could go off of it. I went off of it at four months because I was so tired of being a big bloody bruise. And then when I went into the doctor, they had a fit. So I went back, I was off of it for five weeks, and then I went back on it. Well, in that five weeks, the big, huge bruises and stuff on my legs hardly changed at all. They, they weren't as red, but there was still a big mark there. Now, since having this device, those have gone away, the old ones. And then we have a new foal, uh, a baby miniature horse. So she weighed maybe when she was born 12 pounds, she might weigh 20. I was holding her in my lap and she was one of the bigger babies that we've ever had. And she was kicking. So it was kicking my thigh and I didn't even really think about it. And then all of a sudden I had all these bruises, but they're going away like within two weeks, which wow. were before because of the plavix. So the ones on my arms seem to stay worse, but the ones on my legs, are healing way faster than they were before. So nice. that's one thing. And I, my nails have had bad ridges. I've actually smashed and lost nails from building waterfalls. And this one got crushed in the garage door. I didn't even think I would have a nail. So it grows a little bit upward and it doesn't grow out to the end. But my nails are growing really, really fast and they're growing it looks almost like I'm not going to have the ridge lines and the cracking splitting at the end as much. It's like I can almost see a line that how much they've grown since I've had the device. Oh, wow. Isn't that fun? And a little bit of the white moon is coming back, which I had read about that and it said that that is in older people, like I'm almost 72, that in older people, a lot of times you, they just kind of go away, you know, uh, hmm. but my nails, I think, are growing a lot faster, and I think that they are improving. Cool. How long have you had your device? Um, I think I got it in February. Yeah, I think I got it in February. Okay. Um, and see, Charles has only had his for a little bit over two weeks. But he was sleeping in bed with me, with mine, for all that time. So, and he didn't have, he couldn't really afford to get it right then. And then when it was going to close, I'm like, I'll give you the money. You get it. Because he had had so much improvement. He's diabetic. And he had had so much improvement just from only having it at night. You know? Isn't that amazing? Or like when we're watching TV, we're sitting next to each other or in bed, you know, all night long. And so it had made a big difference in him. And then that made me want to pay for it for my son and daughter. They do a lot for me. And I don't have a lot of money being on social security, but it was something, and they actually could afford to buy it. But I wanted to send them money because I wanted the gift of this help to be from me. You know, because what I got something that I wanted when they experienced that, I wanted it to have come from me. 
Oh, that's so beautiful. So, and my grandson has, uh, what's that stuff where you get the white spots on your skin? Eczema? Um, no, it's, uh, uh, oh. Psoriasis? No, it's like you're, you have no pigmentation. Oh, oh, oh. Is it something placia? Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an autoimmune disease. And it happened after he was forced to have shots um, to go into high school, I believe. Yeah. Um, and oh, alopecia. Is it alopecia? No, that's where you lose your hair, I think. Oh, darn it. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I think of it, the name right now. But um, my uh, son-in-law is Chinese and Vietnamese. And my daughter is English, Irish, Austrian, and American Indian. But she looks like me, my coloring, um, you know, but I have heard that a lot of Asians, when they're mixed with the other uh, American blood and stuff, that they it can end up having. I just think he had a sensitivity and then he went through a bunch of stress and had that shot. And then he developed that. So it'll be like big white blotches on his knees or his elbow or on his eyebrow or. Um, stuff like that. So besides the bruising, what else have you noticed since getting your device? Well, I have a ton of energy and I did have more energy after having the stents. I was having a really, really hard time. I was trying to walk, trying to lose weight. And I just was going backwards, you know. And when you're a person, I've had a nine acre avocado grove that I fertilized and you know, I didn't pick my grove, but I did a lot of work in my grove. When you've done the things that I've done, I had horses for 40 years and rode almost every day. When you're a physical person and as you're losing all this ability, it's really horrible feeling. It's a really horrible feeling. And so now I've got so much stronger and I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of things wrong with me. I need a shoulder replacement. They did shoulder surgery. It was a failed surgery when I went to a different surgeon who was better. I didn't realize that the one I went to was not a good surgeon in Prescott. Um, he said there was nothing he could do with but a replacement. And so I have very little range of motion on my right arm, but that's improving. So I forgot about that too. And I need a knee replacement and I, the other knee has almost no meniscus. My kids bought me a trike for Christmas that has a motor. Um, and I mean, it was a big deal. It was a $2,500 trike. And where I live, that, well, the trikes are all between 15 and 25 or $3,000 anyway with the motor. And they bought me when they go pretty long range and we ride about 10 miles a day. And um, what it allows me to do, he cycled all over Europe when he was younger and he has a very, very expensive road bike that you could hold with two fingers, you know, on your pick it up, it's so light. And so he can cycle all these hills where I live, but I can't. So uh, if I'm going downhill, I'm on zero. I'm not using the motor. If I'm level, I'm on zero. But if I'm on a grade, I can put it on three and pedal to the hardest of my ability. So I'm using my muscles and exercising, but it's allowing me to keep up with him because of course he slows down on a grade too. Um, so that gives me a lot of joy. I, I only have miniature horses now, so I don't have a horse that I can ride. And I'm too old and where I live, the weather is not good enough to ride enough days of the year to be worth it. Plus hay has gone up to like $26 a bale. Wow. Um, and when you're on social security, that's hard. So where riding was always my freedom and my joy. And if something was really stressing me, I'd get on my horse and go out in nature. I can't go out in nature on the trek as much, but just going around our neighborhood, there are deer, jackrabbits, different stuff like that you'll see. And just looking at nature, you know, it 
Oh, yeah. You don't think about your problems and you're just looking at all the beauty around you, you know? Oh, yeah. We live in, we live right across the street from a mountain. So every day when I'm done working, I go out to the mountain. And yeah, that's where I find solace. Your head, isn't it? And you oh. look at the beauty that God created for us. It's just so amazing. You know, I was a really good mom. I was a stay-at-home mom. I spent a lot of time and did a lot of things with my kids. But I don't think that I thought of them as the wonder that I think now. I was divorced then and people that were third men 35 thought I was their age and they were chasing me. But the last 10 years, I've really, really aged. Well, I think you look great. I don't think you look your age one single bit. Um, not, I would never have guessed that you were 70. So, but I'm you, 72. Well, so we're supposed to have a 30 year old body. So whether we're going to look exactly the way we looked when we were 30, I have no idea because it's but our, our physical base. ability. Should be like everything, that. everything, every cell yeah, in your body. Get a horse again. <laughs> That's what I was thinking that. So, so my next phase of questions is. We get to take all that. And then what excites you about that do-over? What excites you to have a 30-year-old body with all the life lessons you've accumulated through the decades? Well, you know, we've talked about it. And he traveled a lot in business when he was younger, like all over the world, and vacationed. We were a much poorer family. And the vacation for us was horse camping. Um, so I haven't done hardly any traveling, but the places I want to travel are where there's no crowds, <laughs> you know, like I would, I would like to go not to Hawaii, but maybe Belize or somewhere where there's an area that's tropical, but less crowded, but mm -hmm. we have talked and he feels like there's going to be a huge reset in our country and that we will be able to afford to when we can't now. And that's one thing because, you know, all my life it's like, well, I really want to travel. And then it's like, well, I'm told to wear a bathing suit. <laughs> not even, not very, for very long. <laughs> so I mean, we're talking about going to Salt Lake City, you know, the admin team and and a lot of ladies are like, well, what am I going to wear? I mean, am I going to be like two or three sizes smaller? So apparently that is going to be able to happen. So that's exciting. Well, I, um, I'm losing weight too. I'm getting stronger. Um, so I just had blood work done today. It'll be interesting. But, you know, I keep wanting to go off that POMIX because I feel like the wave is fighting when I have to take something like Flavix to thin my blood, you know? And well, we can't give medical advice, but, you know, I, I interviewed somebody today that had a similar situation. So Elias, look for his interview. It should be coming out maybe in a week. And, and so did he go off of the Flavix, the blood thinner? Yes. Yes. But of course you want to check with your doctor. And during the interview, he gave his medical disclaimer, like, don't do what I did, but you know. Well, I actually did talk to my doctor. Um, so 30 days ago, I went in, I showed him my device. I told him that I was, um, I had reduced my blood pressure from hundred milligrams of low starting to 50. And my blood pressure was being better than when I used to be on 100 milligrams of Losartan or, um, or the same, well, actually, no, better, but sometimes like almost too low. And so then I actually had, I made this chart and I started not taking any Losartan. But then if I have a stressful day and I happen to take my blood pressure, I'm a little stressed, it would be a little bit higher, even though I didn't take the Losartan, but still it wasn't any higher than when I used to be on 100 milligrams of low starting every day for years so well, look at that that's that's a testimony for this right well he knew someone else in his practice and then I said well you also know Stan Salzman a friend of ours who's just a retired pharmacist and um Christina Rush um 
she's now a moderator um, and her husband, Pete Rushmore, I believe, they're the ones who told us about it and they used to be his propane. Uh, he used to be his propane guy too. So Stan has it. And so my doctor knows Stan from being a pharmacist. I said, he's got it. And I don't know if Pete goes to the same doctor, but he goes, well, somebody else in my practice has that too. But he was very, very interested. He's very open-minded. He's actually a nurse practitioner and I like him better than any doctor I've had in years. And um, he was the one I just went in yesterday because he wanted me to really chart it for 30 days. He said, you know, a cardiologist wouldn't like you being 140 over 88. And I'm like, it's 72. And, or even, even if I'm 149 over 88 for my age, I think that's really good. And I was higher than that on hundred milligrams of low starting for years. And he goes, well, I want you to track it and come in. And then yesterday in his office, I was 140 over, <coughs> I think 83. And he goes, yeah, I think even a cardiologist couldn't say that you needed to be on blood pressure medicine. Wow. So I'm officially off of that. I had a sinus infection and had antibiotics. And so I don't know if it was from partly from that. But anyway, um, for three days last week, I just stopped everything. And uh, the Plavix included. And then I took it one day and then I had another bad day. And then I didn't take it. And then was the next day was with him. And he's like, well, you know, I really think you should take that. And in, in July 15th would be the end of the year. I have 32 more pills without filling it. Which would mean I would stop at 23 days earlier than before. And I think that I'm going to do that for sure. Because I just don't think a year or 23 days, less than a year. What they're saying it is, is that the stint is in there and I have two stints back to back and they're in my LED artery and that the stint is like a metal mesh. And so now your body forms over that stint, making a coating and they, they don't want anything to get thick or block inside that stint. And so that's why they want you on the blood thinner. Mm. I think 23 days less than a year would, I mean, it's either healed or it's not, right? And I actually would think that being with the device, that it would have healed a lot more. And I have something else very weird going on. So I had breast implants when I was 50. I was like a 36H boobs. I lost a lot of weight. And so now there were big, huge hanging things and and I was a size three I lost weight I was a size three and so I went in and I had a reduction on a lift and all my life I've had big breasts and he's like well you'll be like a C and I'm like well I don't want to be a C <laughs> and uh, he goes well we can put an implant in there well that was over 20 years ago and so they can put an implant that was silicone still back then because of the surgery of a reduction of lift. They like cut around your nipple, out to the side, underneath, and then those two parts come together, you know, as how they push your boobs back up and remove a whole lot of skin. And so I had these implants. And at the time, at 20 years, which is about four years ago, or close to 20 years, about four years ago, a chiropractor ruptured the one when Whoa. I went in and oh it was so painful when I knew immediately and when I went in because the girlfriend had been slammed in a horse trailer and had one rupture on her when I went in and they did the scans and stuff it showed that the other one was leaky but not ruptured so I had them removed like four and a half years ago and what I didn't realize was the one that had ruptured all the silicone is all leaked out in between all of the fiber tissue of your breast. And so they're trying to clean that out, but they can never get all of that silicone out from between the tissue. The other one was not really, um, hadn't leaked like that. So this, my left boob feels normal. My right boob, 
all of a sudden I noticed laid down and I hadn't thought about it because I, you know, been cut open and I was, so I hadn't gone and had a mammogram because prior to that, they said I had these little granule things and if too many of them were too close together, they want to do a biopsy on it. They did a biopsy and it was clear. And so I had a little dot thing in there where they did that biopsy. Okay, so now it's, I made up my mind. I'm not, after listening to a whole bunch of homeopathic and different people speak on cancer, I wouldn't allow a biopsy again because if you do have cancer, it's going to spread. And my girlfriend had it. They removed her boobs. Now she has breast cancer in her brain. Oh, yeah. wow. Told she's totally clear. And then five later years later, she starts falling down and stuff. And they scan her brain and she has breast cancer in her brain. <coughs> and then she would not do any of the natural things. And what they're going to do to her is not going to work. They wouldn't listen to me because I totally believe that ivermectin or that thin benzamine, it's like it's a warmer for dogs. Mm -hmm. I know more than one person who have used that. Um, I take folic acid every day, which also helps remove heavy metals and stuff from my body. And it's a liquid. It's, uh, you know, made from the layers of the earth. But um, anyway, she just, she's really, really in bad shape. And so I don't know if this point it would matter or not, but you know, you can try and tell people things that you learn about cancer, but I would never allow a biopsy again. Anyway, I went in because I could feel these huge lumps and I thought it would be a huge thing. And on the screen where the uh, silicone is, it looks uh, black on their screen when they're looking at an ultrasound. And so then he did want to do a 3D mammogram and they did come back and say that it was mostly scar tissue and that the black was still silicone left in there. And they found one little five millimeter uh, thing that he said did not look like cancer and they wanted to check in six months to make sure it had grown. Well, I wear this, it's on my bra right now on my boob. And I feel like it's changing that. And it'll be very interesting when I go back for the scan in two or three more months, you know, because then what are they going to see? Because it's going to look different, I think. And it's hard for me. I keep trying to feel it's like really weird, you know, where the hard part is. I keep trying. I think that it's getting smaller some days and some days I'm not sure, but it'll be very interesting to go back and see what that breast looks like on the scan when they right. down because it'll be at six months. I think it was in August that I wow. go for the ultrasound on it. That's going to be a cool thing to actually be able to see, you know? Yeah, because if it has, I don't think it could remove the silicone, but if it's tissue in some way, you know? Well, Put it this way, the, the quantum twine wave effect is to remove vectors from your body that is not supposed to be there. So anything that's not supposed to be there, which would include silicone, it's supposed to remove it. So yeah. the cool thing is that, you know, we are the trailblazers leading this path that I believe is going to be like, like, like Einstein said, frequency is the medicine of the future. You know, and also in some ways, I would say Whoopi has, um, you know, sometimes I saw, okay, but then I think about it, I'm like, okay, I'm not having as much pain getting up off the couch. I was still having pain getting up and down off the couch, even after my stents, even though I had more energy, I'm having like, Loads of energy. Who do you know, 72, that's out there with a chainsaw sawing down trees and filling up trucks with wood? You know, for several days in a row, we've been doing it because this is stuff we procrastinated and not done because I didn't feel good enough. And I would never let him cut my trees without me. <laughs> well, they would really look bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. I love your energy. I mean, you don't, you don't see your age at all. So that's fabulous. Well, just the other day I drank my pollen, which I have to drain several times a year, but 
Usually it's much more tedious. I have to move some rocks and stuff when I'm doing it so I can have the pump in the lowest place and suck everything out and hose, you know, getting all the algae out of it and stuff. And I was thinking, wow, that was pretty easy. This is like the easiest time. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for you. You're feeling better. But I oh, still yeah. want to know what you're looking forward to besides travel. What um, are you looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to feeling good. To feeling, to feeling like I felt when I was younger. You know, I have um, thought a lot about the end of life lately <laughs> um, as I feel that I'm approaching there. And so it's feeling that the hopefulness that I will have more time with my children and my grandchildren and get to see great grandchildren. Uh, I feel very, very hopeful, mm -hmm. very hopeful. And, um, you know, I want to do something else to give back. I don't know what, but uh, some kind of, you know, obviously I'm no good at any technology. <laughs> <laughs> something to do with horses perhaps well no i want to give back to people somehow but i don't know exactly what um but you know volunteering i mean really if this all keeps progressing that's why i said we're the i mean i feel like the frequency is the medicine of the future you know so mm -hmm. there's i mean the more and the more the more people that learn about these possibilities and after the qr can see the documentary and they see what's possible i would feel that they would choose that route versus a traditional route oh yeah so we're waiting you know one step at a time right we're waiting for the beds to be tested and approved and then the admin team goes through to be the guinea pigs and then we'll see where everybody else goes. I don't know exactly how it's going to shake out. I have this narrow focus of making videos. So um, all yeah. that big high level stuff, I don't know. Yeah. So I had a Facebook page, even though I really hate Facebook, but um, it allowed me to show pictures of my work. And I got this big following and lots of people have like, 10 to 17 of my pieces. And then when I had the stents, actually before I had the stents, he almost died of COVID. And um, I took care of him. Like they put him on a steroid and he literally, I had to check him every two hours and give him insulin because he wasn't even conditioned to give himself the insulin himself. And I was so freaked out that he was gonna become insulin, um, what do you call it, resistant because we were giving so much more insulin. He would go to 400 and he didn't eat one bad thing. And then about the end of the, about when it's almost time to take that insulin again, he'd be falling down and screwed up to 400. And so every two hours just kept telling me, give him the insulin for the number. But I was so afraid of the massive amounts of insulin. But when he got off of that steroid, within two weeks, he was pretty much back to normal. He does take less insulin with having, now that he has his own device all the time, he is taking less insulin unless he really cheats. He likes sugar. <laughs> I mean, There's I so many. I tried to cut it out, but it's hard to cut out sugar. There's so many things you can have instead of sugar nowadays though, you know? So well, I make a mug cake that I use um, almond flour and an egg and um, stevia, the vanilla stevia and stuff like that. And it's not real, real sweet, but he really likes it. But oh, good. he does like bad things. <laughs> he, I mean, he'll eat a cookie in the morning. So Got it. You'd be surprised what spikes your blood sugar. The glycemic index of bread is higher than table sugar. So there's many things, there's many things that spike our, our blood sugar more than just sugar. Pretty much the only thing we're having is Dave's bread. That's the seed bread. That's the real thin slice. And it's really low in carb and sugar. Oh, okay. So, good. 
that's and we don't have that every like I have to freeze that and take out a piece when we have it or else the whole look would be bad because it could take us two weeks to use a loaf of bread oh wow that's great so we're not having a lot of bread either cool um I mean, like I make a lot of salads. I make a lot of homemade. I don't buy any pre-made food, really. Um, but he will get cookies. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm going to have to find a good recipe to send you that doesn't have sugar in it. Monk fruit is a great baking. Um, they even sell it at Costco, like a bag. It's red. It's called La Concha. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. That's a great substitute for sugar. Okay. And, um, I know that I've seen cookies before. I just steer clear of anything like that because to me it leads to, oh, that was good. I want another one. Oh, that yes. was good. I want another one. And I just don't want to go down that path. You know, my cholesterol tends to be a little bit on the high side anyway, like 140 over. I don't know, but my triglycerides were really, really low. All the bad stuff was really, really low. And then there's a chart. I have to go look it up, but you subtract the one from the other. And in every single one that I did that subtraction check, I was in the like lowest category. That's great. And here's the thing about cholesterol. Cholesterol is a precursor hormone. So all of your sex hormones come from cholesterol. So sex hormones are the fountain of youth. Yeah. So why would we want to shut off the fountain of youth? That's interesting because they made him, they kept trying to make Charles take steroids and not steroids, um, statins, and he wouldn't take them. And so he used krill oil and no flesh niacin. And he brought, I think he was at 190 and he brought it down to 100. And she was still trying to make him take a statin. And then at one point when it was 100, those are working as I never took them. They should have matched with an endocrinologist um, for his diabetes. His AC1 is pretty good for a diabetic. And she's like, well, you don't really need me anymore. She came out of his office and said, you know, you can go to just a regular doctor. <laughs> <laughs> They're crazy. And, I, I don't even want to go there because I don't want this channel to get shut down. Um, yeah. My other one had so many strikes against it. So I have to be careful. Oh, yeah. um, but I will say, Kathleen, we've got to close. Is there any parting okay. words you'd like to leave us with? Uh, not that I, I said I'm having less pain in my knees and shoulder and energy and off the blood pressure and um, my bruises are healing faster. I just, I'm doing much better. And hope is a really big thing. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. It was really great to talk to you. And um, we really, really enjoyed the Zoom meetings and everything that, you know, was happening. So well, thank I see you. a little Wonder Woman back there. <laughs> yeah, I love Wonder Woman. But I want to also thank you, Kathleen, because you've, you're so full of energy and your spirit is bright. And it was just such an enjoyable conversation. Oh, I look forward so to much. another one with Thank part two so after much. the QR. Okay. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.